Hello everybody. What does the Yanzi, Slow Blues and the Beginner's Blues have in common? As many notes as necessary, not a note too much. It's an artistic ideal. I can only strive for it. You will tell me if you liked it and I wish you good luck. It's very easy. It's beginner friendly. Let's try, shall we? Enjoy.
welcome to all of you to this 12 bar blues which is written in the archaic form meaning we don't have a one bar g7 one bar f7 f7 and then go back to c but we have two bars g7 it's an even older form and uh, let's have a look at the start we will play this in the intro here the finger setting in the left hand is very important uh, you will realize i wrote this um, in a way that you don't have to jump a lot that you can reach everything within your hand, or most of it. Uh, for that you have to respect a couple of finger settings. For example, when we go here, we take the second one, first one, second one, first one. This way it's very easy. Two, one, two, one. And on the right we start with the third one here. This way we have the second one on the F sharp, the first one here, and this one. See what I mean? The hand does not have to move. Okay, let's go on for one more time. And then, and we start. Why did I call it blues for Yancey? Because, well, Yancey's blues, especially the slower ones, and beginner's blues have one thing in common. Would you have guessed? as many notes as necessary, not one note too much. That's the idea for the beginner's blues also, um, to keep it easy, but then choose the right notes, of course, so it's still nice to play. Same, is, uh, same idea counts for many arts. Don't do too much, just enough uh, that it has the maximum of effect. And so if you manage that, then you have the real essence, you know? So, of course, I cannot claim this, but I tried. Let's have a look. So, when you start, you um, first find out which notes in the right hand lock up with the left hand. I call them the, um, how do I call them, Fritz? Um, anchors, I call them anchors, where they come together. One and two and three and four and one and two, it's repeating, and three and four and one and two and three and exception, four and one. So it's three repetitions and one exception in the end of the phrase. And this is also the tempo you started at best. Even slower probably for the first time. And two and three and four and you see only then you will get result results fast. Finger setting here, I, I just showed you the wrong one, sorry. Um, I make this usually like this, but it's as good as this one. And I would in your place prefer this one because the second finger is very often serving two notes. So make it a habit, okay? Start right from the start, like learning the good habits. This is, of course, only good habit in blues piano. A classical teacher would throw you out, out the window from the fifth floor. Okay. And repeat, blah, 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 blah. Then we do the same in F. You figure that um, the um, last bar C, I left in the right hand empty. Isn't that sweet of sweet Christian? Because then you have all the time to focus on the left hand to get the change right, okay? Now, empty here. And you put your hand in position. Actually, you never leave that position. You just stay here, okay? Then it's the same, except we, um, we have the E flat. rhythmic structure is the same. It makes it easier, but it's also a musical trick um, to make the melody homogeneous. Is that the word? Homogeneous, musical. 
and so on. Okay? Uh, and then we have the turnaround, which is uh, equal to the beginning, but it's one octave down, gives a little bit of diversion. And it sounds nice, you know, nice and warm. And here, you will have to respect the following finger setting. Look at this. Now, we want to end up here with the fifth finger. In order um, to reach there without leaving control of the piano, we do the following. First finger, second finger, and first finger again. And then you have the familiar octave in the right hand. You see, the octave is great for staying in control and everybody can roughly estimate the octave. Okay, now, yes, or even for you beginners, maybe not all of you are beginners, I put a slide in. It's usually a difficulty, but it's one you should, you know, get familiar with already in the beginning of your musical career. Um, because it's a common element and you should face that thing straight away, just, you know, sliding down, like by, as if by accident, you can um, smear a little bit of uh, butter or vegetable oil here. Don't do that. Don't do that on that piano. But pretend it is. Pretend there's oil on it and then you... That's a good thing. Pretend it, okay? And I only put one in the beginning. And if you want so, then later on you, you can play all four of them. Then the same comes in F. Here yeah, now, second time. Oh, that's so easy that's so easy I know it sounds maybe a little bit arrogant sometimes if I say it's so easy but it's a typical mistake you know I have a son you know and uh, when he sat when he was younger uh, with his school work uh, with his homework and with some maths uh, problems to solve and then you sit by there and uh, you say come on it's so easy wrong that's wrong parenting because obviously for somebody here, it's not easy. And I figured many parents do that. Hey, come on, that's so easy. No, for that person it's obviously not easy. So it's just a custom for me, just to annoy you a little bit. And then we have these chords. They are really self-explanatory, uh, pl plum, 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 planetary. They are planetary, uh, the chords. And then we have these, um, Just before um, we go on page three, where that's just in the sheet music, um, it's bar number 37. Uh, at the end of that turn of, of that chorus, here, we play this. And here we have again the thumb playing these. Again, your hand is not losing control of the keyboard. And then we have the turn around again. Same as beginning, but just to solve the notes. You see? Okie dokie. Um, then we have a little bit. Uh, next chorus would be. You know, it's echoing the motive from the beginning. You know, but we don't do that here. It's just echoing a little bit. Uh, sorry. And da 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 da. This is strengthening your third, fourth, and fifth finger. They're the weakest, and uh, so this is not so easy. But try to give it some. Um, some sound, you know, not like very weak, like uh, train them. You can also train your third, fourth and fifth finger um, when you, for example, take your fourth finger and um, rest it on a key 
and then rest the lower arm, not pressing, not with a muscle power, just resting, uh, rest, um, resting the weight of your arm on the fourth finger. Um, and this is straight, so there is tension here, but only in the wrist, you're not pressing, because you, your arm might uh, uh, weigh already a couple of kilograms. I don't know, what does an arm weigh? Hmm, that's hard to tell, is it? Now, so, and just rest it there. You will see, and this already strengthens the fourth finger. Try to, that the other fingers are not doing like this, uh, but try to keep them relaxed. Usually the thumb goes up like this, but try. And then you do this a little bit, a minute or so. And then you take the fifth finger. You will see the muscle here is contract, contracting, contracting. You can feel it here. So that's the axis of evil, the second, the axis of your muscle and rest there. That's workout for your fingers. And don't like, um, uh, like sink down with it like this. Try to keep this uh, bending stable here and then, and don't do this. So, and there you rest. And then you take your fourth finger again. He has uh, recovered now a little bit and you do that every day a little bit. You can also do it with the other fingers, but they especially need it. And then you're much safer with, it feels good to feel safer with your weaker fingers. It always feels very good if you have weaknesses and you train your weaknesses and you become suddenly strong at that. Like, imagine you're a really greedy, cheap person. You don't like to give money away, like to Christian, and then you train that. You give him all your money, Christian. How good that feels. <laughs> Christian, that was, a, that was a lousy trick. <laughs> it was a lousy trick. Okay, now we have the th theme again. Then we have the turnaround again. Then we have the chord again. You know, it's, I kept it quite simple. And it's, I find it sounds nice. Yeah, I don't know if it's a masterpiece, but it has something calm about it. Just like, let's say, I, I did two of those uh, Yancey tunes. The How Long Blues. Um, yeah, I should put it here somewhere. Otherwise, try it. It's also very good for beginners. Um, it's also, it's simple and has a kind of calm quality to it. Resting, not much flashy stuff, um, but just like, dum, just telling a little story without much fuss. Okay, now we have this. Um, at, uh, in bar number 56, we have where we go, where we go to back to C. It's only coming once, and that's actually a very typical Jimmy Yancey element. Of course, nobody, everybody plays it. He was one of the first, uh, and you know, all the piano players after uh, him or after Albert Emmons include everything from history in their playing, so it's now commonplace. These thirds are very much Jimmy Yancey. And they're triplets, you know? Four, 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 one. Four, 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 one. Four, four, four. I know four, four, four is a bit uh, helpless. Uh, many teachers say like four to two or four and two. Four and two, one and two. And three again, four and two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and and that is easy again. And then we have this turnaround again that you know, like this one. And again, remember here, it's uh, bar number sixty-two. We have the same again. Now. Now watch this. You you don't play this because we have to go up to the up to the G. You have to jump. You lose control. But you play it. Um, uh, now here, first one, and then you reach it. And an, an octave. Got it? I'm sure you got it. You all smart people. And then we have the end with the um, 
timid, almost humble uh, C6 chord, which I like, you know, you could, you could always impress something like this, but here I wanted also to stay understated a little bit. understated an and is an and you don't have to always like <laughs> it doesn't suit this piece would you agree okay now comes the slow replay i see afterwards enjoy
so you arrived, which is wonderful. Because now you can subscribe to my channel. Please do so by hitting my face here or there. There are so many tutorials for you. You can even master that if you had uh, three more lives. If you like my tutorial, please leave a like. All the best. Take care. Bye from Berlin. Stay safe.